Summers in the meeting. Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello, Paul. Hey, I'm here. <clears throat> okay, and I saw Tyler in the hallway, but I don't know. Is he here? Oh, there's more than six. Two Jameses. Okay, I don't know where Tyler is. Okay, um, so um, cancel. What I want to do is a, is a kind of a quick demo for about 20 minutes, see if I can actually get it to work. Um, and it will, it will end up, in a sense, with this tiddler, with this tiddly called templating exercise. Um, and um, I'll kind of walk you through this, and this is one of these meta examples, okay? So the guided development exercise, and this is useful to everybody who's doing projects, is really about using templates and building with templates, um, as well as about doing a project in Tiddly Wiki where you have this concept that you want to end up with a document at the end of the day. You have an idea of what you want it to look like. It's a wiki. And so um, what I did in this project is I decided I'm going to start building it from a spreadsheet. Um, and this is the spreadsheet that we'll look at. Um, and I did this on Monday night, and it kind of worked, kind of didn't. Um, you can't see my screen, but help if I shared my yeah. screen, right? Um, So we'll do it from this spreadsheet, and I'm going to walk through the process of the spreadsheet again. I, I did this Monday night, but I'll try to do it more succinctly, so maybe we'll have a decent 20-minute video, um, where you start with a set of a table, an idea, and then um, I've got a couple of readings that I want you to do in this exercise, if you're doing the exercise. So I generate from my um, a set of raw tiddlers, then I'm then going to show you how to export and import into a tiddly space, into a tiddly wiki. Okay. Um, Monday night it was working pretty well, but there's one piece that didn't work. I couldn't figure it out. But as soon as we hung up, Hagar figured it out and sent me an email telling me, oh, this is what you have to do. You're an idiot. He was right. <laughs> um, so what you're seeing here is a wiki that was 90% constructed in a spreadsheet and then imported. And so the value of doing that might be, and, and that's the question, when you have data that is highly related and you can imagine a set of objects that you can build in a spreadsheet uh, so you don't have to necessarily build them by hand in a Tiddler. So that's a, I could probably figure out a way to do this in Tiddly Wiki, but I don't, I can't get, I can't figure out a way to make it to make the representation go as smoothly as I can in a spreadsheet. So um, I'm open to other people having different models of building content that then gets weakified. To me, a spreadsheet is just like, it's like, you know, if you're a carpenter, you're like, well, I can use a hammer or I can use an air hammer. You know, I can plug something. I can use a, a, a little hand drill. You know, you can use all sorts of different tools to end up with the same result. So here I just want to show sort of what a spreadsheet might look like. So let's just walk through, and I will try to get this all done. It's 9.15, I'll try to have this done at 9.35. So we're looking for a 20-minute video, okay, which we're going to begin now, and then when James does his editing, and it's start and stop, it's going to start right after I said that. Yeah. Okay, so here's the idea, right? So I want you all to think about um, different hypertextual techniques, and I'll try to, to do this in terms of... Um, um, highlighting and as I talk about the stuff I'll color it and um, see if we can bring some attention to different parts. So I want you to think think about different hypertextual techniques including transcluding, tagging, templating, and filtering. That you know. <laughs> um, and I want you to think about different writing practices. What I've what I have come to call over the past couple of weeks um, writing practices, which is a little, is not a term that we started the semester with. That is a really horrible set of colors. Um, so we'll try to do better. Um, that's a little better, right? So writing practices. And I've identified three writing practices that I think might be worth paying attention to. Um, we've got writing to think, creating interactives, and refactor. And we've defined these elsewhere, and we use these as the same in the previous set of exercise. But basically, writing to think is the process of, of 
when you write, you use the exercise and the, the, the act of writing to help you formulate your thoughts. Okay, as opposed to um, sometimes you might sit to think, or sometimes you might hike to think, or shower to think. You know, you do all sorts of things. It's okay. I'm going to think about this stuff, and your thoughts come to you. And some, and one of the techniques that we, that I'm interested in, in exploring, is this idea of well, you sit down and you write in order to clarify your thoughts and think. Um, they teach us in English composition, I think, um, in a lot of different places. It's a pretty well-known technique. Um, and my idea here is, well, is Tizzy Wiki a useful tool? To have in your toolkit when you sit down to write to think. Same way as like, okay, if I'm going to take a shower to think about stuff, what tools do I need to have? Hot water would help. <laughs> Cold water doesn't facilitate thinking. My, it would be my guess. Um, so that's what writing to think is. So can we use tiddlywinky when you write to think? Let's say the answer is yes. And what I want you to think about in this exercise, those who are doing it, is well, how would you use the technique of templating, which is a fairly specific technique, how would you use the technique of templating while you are writing to think? And in the exercise, what you do is you say, well, this is how I use Tiddly Wiki. This is an example of how I might imagine using Tiddly Wiki when I'm writing to think. And this is how this sub-tool in Tiddly Wiki called templating would help me. This technique would help me engage in the activity of writing to think. Um, the idea of creating an interactive, that's what Cassandra is doing. I think that's what Paul's doing. I think that's what Kira's doing. That's probably what most people end up doing here is that, especially if you're a CID major, maybe if you're an IDT student, you, you're, you're in the business of, you're in the, the profession, your goal is to make things that other people will read and see and engage with. We'll call it an interactive. It's not like you're not making a poster in this class. You're not making a term paper or word document that's linear, you're making an interactive text. So you're creating an interactive. So when you're creating an interactive, the question becomes, how does the technique of templating help you? And show me an example of how you would use templates to facilitate the creating of interactives. It's the most obvious case that we have in this exercise, because I can't imagine, well, you could create interactives without templates, but it's really, it's really where the interactive is going to take shape is through those templates. And then the third technique, or, or the third practice is refactoring, um, which is the process of you've got a whole bunch of text, you've got a whole bunch of stuff in there, and you're, when you write term papers, magazine articles, anything, you might have a rough draft, and then you have to go through a refactoring process. And that refactoring term, in my mind, means rearranging things, it's the editorial process, it's correcting spelling errors and grammar errors, that's all refactoring. It's not the creating of the words, but it's refactoring them so that they're, they're good. Um, sometimes those will end up in interactive, sometimes they'll end up in all sorts of out products, but the, but the action, the practice of refactoring, of, of revising your writing is what we're after here. And then the question is, well, how could you use templating or templates to facilitate that active process, that active practice of refactoring. So three different, three different practices and one technique. Okay. Now you'll notice that I built this table, and had I been, you know, more advanced in my thinking, I would have used this table to support. That's a nasty color. I would have used this table to support other active, other exercises as well. And probably the next time I teach this class, I'll say, oh, well, there it is, it's already built, right? So you could use this exercise to support any of these techniques. So in the previous exercise, I asked people to work on tagging, but I didn't give them a space to document. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, so using this table, I want this table to be represented in Tiddly Wiki and if you go down below here on lines 10, et cetera, you see that I've put some brackets around those. So I'm gonna put, literally copy and paste that table into Tiddly Wiki, run through a processor, and then I'll be able to click on those tiddlers and it will take me to a tiddler called templating while writing to think. And ultimately, my vision here is that the students doing the exercise will 
open that tiddler, they're going to use the wiki that I've built to start. They're going to open that tiddler and they're going to take notes and describe their process and build their exercise in the, the wiki that I give them with a bunch of tiddlers to, to, um, to, to pull on. So they don't have to start fresh. So the first thing is going to be to get this table into a wiki in a way that's visible. Okay. And then the next thing, so, so what's going to happen is I want to also create tiddlers for each of the techniques, the transcluding, the tagging, the templating, and filtering, so that they become tags. And I want to create a tiddler for writing to think, creating interactives, and refactoring. So we can begin to describe what that is, or at least have the possibility that people can talk about that and have things linked to it. Um, and um, that's about it, right? So I jump over to, oh, let me jump over to my reading. So before you start the exercise, you do a small amount of reading. There's a Wikipedia article on web templating. There's um, a couple of interesting tiddlers in tiddlywiki.com as well as in design right called Template Tiddlers and Transclusion with Templates. And there's this 1994 article that talks about hypertext templates, which I think is instructive and worth reading. So I built some information about that. I've given them a title. I talk about the source, and I build a link. Okay. Um, so we jump over to raw tiddlers. Um, and um, this, get a, this got me a little confused. And so it's probably a little confusing to the students. From my perspective, I'm making a project. So here I am, the author, I'm writing a project. My project is to create a wiki that other students can complete an exercise in. So whether or not the big tags or project or exercise is sort of an open question. I just use the word project. Um, and so I created, and so what I'm gonna do here is just walk through all the tiddlers that I think I'm gonna wanna create. So I wanna create one that's project, that's gonna be my base page for my project. And column B, that's the value that I'm gonna put in the text, but that's the actual, what you know, what the text is gonna say. So in this case, I'm doing a list links filter tag title, which you've seen before, it's the tagging macro. Um, I just want my project to list all of the tiddlers that are tagged to it. Okay. Then I've got a set of tiddlers that are about my main pieces of my project. I'm gonna have project objects, which are those transcluding while writing to think tiddlers. Those are gonna be my objects. Um, in Cassandra's case, her objects might be her portfolio pieces. Um, in Kira's case, she has a more complicated structure that doesn't have a fixed set of objects, but an object might be a piece of a story. You might have all different kinds of objects. You might not have one set of objects, which is okay. Um, but a portfolio, the object is kind of the piece. Um, I think in James's wedding project, which he's still working on, which is good. These things are complicated, right? Yep. The object is the photo. Doesn't mean that there's not others, there's templates and stuff like that, but the main, that's the main object, okay? Um, I have project dimensions. Um, those are, um, in Cassandra's case, it might be the navigation pieces that she's gonna use, same with James, in Kira's case, it's, um, um, it's, in my project, it's about the things that I'm interested in talking about. So if you go back to my table, my project objects are hypertext, or my project dimensions are hypertext techniques and writing practices. Those are the sort of the, the titles of my table, if you will. Um, I've got project templates. I'm going to build a whole set of, this is about templating, I'm going to build a whole set of templates right in this wiki, in the spreadsheet that will then apply. And that's where I messed up. That's 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 a really new thing that I hadn't. Hagar taught me the showed me the one piece I was missing. I forgot to tag my template tags to template. Um, I'm gonna have references, the things you're reading. Um, okay. And so then here's starting on line seven through ten. Those are the tech the templates I'm gonna build. I'm gonna build an objects template, a dimensions template, a techniques template, and a techniques being practiced template. Okay. Um, so Cassandra, you might have the same thing. You might have different objects. You might have videos and um, PDFs and animations. So you might have an animations template. Okay, they might be the same, but you can, if if you're going to do this exercise or you begin to think about it, you think about what things do I want to treat differently. So therefore, what templates do I need to have? So 
Paul, I forgot about you, you're still here. Um, Paul's got a um, bunch of bands that's coming in. Maybe he only has one template, but maybe you have a band for the, or you have a template for the video that shows the band, you know, if there's a YouTube video out there. So think about the different ways that you want to treat different kinds of objects, and then you write a template about them, okay? The, um, when I go back to my, the things that are tagged project, all I'm doing is for everyone doing a list links of, fil of title. I should put that in there. Um, for my templates, I have a slightly different piece of text, um, which is the, the code that you, you do need to learn to write a template. It's that first part of it, list filter equals is current tag project objects. Okay, so what that does is says to tiddlers that are floating around in space and about to be opened, when you say, show me this tiddler, if you think of a tiddler as having a mind of its own, the tiddler's gonna say, oh, what tags do I have? Oh, these are my tags. Do my tags match any templates? Oh, matches this template. That's that, you know, list filter line. It matches, then do the stuff below that line. If it doesn't match that project objects, just ignore the stuff below the line, okay. Um, most of my tiddlers in this case are just gonna list links, filter, tag, title. Um, and then for my, for these guys, I'm going to transclude this guidelines document, which I'm gonna show you, and that's the, actually the one I'm gonna write today with you. Um, for my references, I'm going to transclude reference link. I'll show you where that comes from. And then the guidelines is another links. Okay. So every one of my objects has a primary tag, um, which is really the object type. Um, and, you know, again, you guys, you build your own structure. For me, this made sense to me to build it that way. So it's got a primary tag. Um, I wanted to tag every tiddler with an associated hypertext technique if it applied. If not, I leave it blank. You look confused because I was just annoyed. Okay. Um, I wanted to tag it to every practice if it applied. If not, I'm going to leave it blank. And then every tiddler has to have tags. And if you look at my formula, the tags are go get the primary tag, or the formula says go get the primary tag. That's equal C2. Go get the hypertextual technique. That's D2. Go get the practice tag, that's an E2. And oh, by the way, is C2 the name of my the name of my primary tag is project templates? Then tag this tiddler with that dollar sign colon slash tag slash view template. That was the piece I forgot on Monday. If you tag a tiddler and say, hey, you're a template, got a template tag, then it will be treated as a template. If you don't, it won't. And so you have to figure out a way to get that in, in there. And I don't want to, what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to have to be opening tiddlers and manually adding them. I wanted this as much as possible to just jump right in. Um, I think on the references, a couple of them I send a design right permalink to something. I don't know that I'm actually using those, so we'll talk about how we could use those. Um, so I've got a design right permalink ready to go. I've got a template filter, which is what I push over into the text later on, so I wrote it here. And then I've got these things called reference links for my references. Okay, so that's actually, a, if you look at the code there, that says, that's the, the reference link says, go get the title from C2, put a vertical bar in there, and then go get the link from A2 um, in the reading section. So that's, and then if you look at what it generates in the spreadsheet, um, it looks exactly like what you might type right here, what you might type in a tiddler to get a link to be generated. So if you think, if you look at this, this is, um, and it takes some time to poke around the spreadsheet, but this is a way to say, this is a way to make 37 tiddlers, 38 tiddlers, sorry, um, 30, 37 tiddlers, because the first line is the, the titles, and to just go, boom, here you go, here's your 38 tiddlers, and you've got something to work with. Um, apparently, what Jeremy said in our last conversation is that for some reason, most other people in the world use Tiddly Wiki don't do it through spreadsheets. And um, I don't know. I don't know what they do to import large numbers of Tiddlers. They might write some code, like you started, like you had code, your black box code that I teased you about a couple weeks ago. That's another way to do exactly this. It's just like a series of if statements. Well, if this, then that, and write this out, and you generate, and then it generates that JSON file. Move through code instead of through spreadsheet. 
Um, so if you're a programmer, you could probably do this. Um, being a mortal, non-programmer type like I am, I find spreadsheets incredibly empowering. You can do amazing things in a spreadsheet with relatively little code. Um, so like, um, this, this code is key. The one that well, opens a, a, a cell with the equal sign. Come on, let's go right here. Puts stuff in quotes that needs to be rendered literally by whatever's between the, co the quotes. And then has that, that's called an ampersand, the and sign. It says ampersand and then something else. In this case, go get the value of a cell. And because it's got a dollar sign in front of the A and a dollar sign in front of the number, it's going to grow when it says go get that specific cell. If I took the dollar signs off, it would be go get that cell that's relative to where I am in the spreadsheet. So if I move it down a row, it's going to change to 38 to 39. If I move it over a column, it's going to change to the A to a B. Um, again, that's something that this is like spreadsheet work. But um, it doesn't take much to get fairly proficient in writing spreadsheet code so, or, or formulas. Um, so I generate these in a spreadsheet um, and I will, I've got it all set. I'm gonna do my file, download as a CSV. I'm gonna save it. In this case, I'm gonna save it to my Dropbox in the folder that I've created for guided development and templating tables and I'm gonna call it raw tiddlers CSV. It's a because I the, the process of doing this, I've probably exported and imported this thing 30, 40 times. Okay, because I'm a very much a trial by error programmer. I'm not smart enough to figure it all out ahead of time and just get it to work the first time. So I have to trial by error. Well, that didn't work. So you do it again. That didn't work. And the nice thing about doing this in the spreadsheet is you can get all of your, in this case, 38, but could be 500 tiddlers to sort of work. Nope, that's not right. Change one thing in the spreadsheet, you know, change a double quote to a single quote or, or a relative to a non-relative address. Change one thing, save it as a CSV, import them all again, they overwrite them in the, in the tiddler and you're, you're good to go. So you can make significant changes, editorial changes, editing changes to your tiddlers this way as well. If you change something into the wiki and overwrite it with something you're importing from a spreadsheet, you just throw away whatever you just did. So you have to understand the relationship and what you are doing as a writer when you're importing, you're overwriting. Um, and there's no warning that I've ever detected. So I'm going to save this as a CSV file. Um, it says replace it. Yeah, I want to replace it because I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, James showed me this approach last week. What he does is he clicks on his download, he finds his file, he shows it in the finder. So it's quickly, in, if you're a Mac or Windows, it's a similar kind of thing. And then what I can do is I open with text edit. So I actually look at my file. And does it sort of make sense to me? Pretty much looks good. You know, and depending on what it is I just did, I can have enough of a visual sense to know where the changes that I made should show up. That's like having a that requires being sort of close to your data in a way that, that I think is important if you're a designer. You, 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 want to, you want to understand your data objects and kind of know. So in this case, like, let's see, what's the last thing I did? Um, um, right here. Um, that had been at one point a relative reference. It was pulling up the title of the current tiddler, and that didn't work because that just that just didn't work. Maybe I'll show you how why that didn't. I don't have time to show you that because I'm already late. So, so you, you get that. We've got the CSV. We go to the CSV.json converter tool, that hated thing that causes all sorts of problems. Um, so bad I just closed it. Um, I've used it so often I just have to type CSV in my Firefox magic bar and it comes right up. Um, Clear the input. I find that helps a lot. Um, I also find that bringing a file in instead of pasting it in works a little better. So I'm going to paste my raw tiddler CSV file. Scroll down to CSV to JSON. I want it to look like this. I want it to start with a bracket. I want it to say title, colon, project, text. You know, I want to look at that and say, yeah, that looks good. 
there's another way that CSV to JSON represents some things, and that's not right. So if it doesn't look like that, do it again somehow. Download the result. Um, I save the file. I like if I imported raw to their CSV, I want to export raw to their JSON. Did you say it was better to copy text on the dirty import? I find it more, I'm successful more often when I browse a file and import the file than when I copy and paste into the box. There's something about, um, something about caching that throws the system off. I mean, it was caching, if you saw Monday night, it was it, somehow my cache was like from a totally different project and it was bringing them in. It's like, that's just crazy, so okay. So there's my raw tiddlers.json. Yeah, I want to replace it because I'm doing this carefully. I'm paying attention. Um, and now I'm going to, let's see if it works. Um, I don't have my import tool out there. I'll import my raw tiddlers.json. Um, and it worked, right? Because as soon as you get that, you know it worked. You know you're good to go and you get nothing. You know, it's time to close your computer and go. <laughs> what the hell? Well, it's it's frustrating and really annoying. And it's not what you think you're learning to do, but what you're learning to do is deal with that frustration and solve the problem because that's the key to your the odds of you actually ever using Tizzy Wiki in a professional environment are maybe low. But the odds of you ever importing a file from one system to another are extraordinarily high. And if you do that, the odds of it not working are 100%. <laughs> so dealing with, so figuring out how to debug your own situation is really the skill that I'm trying to teach. So I'm gonna go ahead and import them. They're all beautiful, look at that, it's saved. And so let's look at these. Um, I'm gonna start with project. And if you remember the code for project was list links tag title filter, right? So. So there's the code, it's written in the text file. Um, it comes with all this other baggage. It's got a value or it's got these fields. Because those were in the columns that I imported, they were blanks. So it doesn't really hurt anything for this project to have a, a field called design write permalink and reference link, even though it has no values. Okay, so my project is nice, it lists my keys. Um, Let's look at our project dimensions. We've got hypertextual techniques and writing practices. So let's look at what are the hypertextual techniques. We've got filtering, tagging, and templating, and transcluding. And then we've got this little thing down on the bottom, which is the first time you'll see this. The name of the template, it says project dimensions template. Like, what is that? Okay. So what I've done for these initial set of templates and what I recommend that you do when you're starting in templates and beginning to debug we're going to go look at the project dimensions template tiddler because everything's a tiddler. Let's look at the code. This is the list links filter that I showed you. And then what you didn't notice was also there was this, um, this part of code. Okay, so a VR puts a break, a line return in, and then the word template colon, and then the name of the template. Okay, so I'm just going to show you that. This is project dimensions template. Um, Ask me that question in one second when I finish the sentence. In one second. Okay. okay. All right. Five seconds. Um, we're looking for the project dimensions template. Okay. Here's the. Sorry. Project dimensions template. Here's the. The column called text is what will show up in the field called text in the template. And you've never seen that field name because it's just sort of baked into the tiddly wiki, the text field. So we're, I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then the value of the text field is exactly what we just showed. List, filter, current tag, project dimensions, break, template, colon, and the name of the template. So if you see, that's exactly what we got. Um, this box in here, this box that you can change the size of, you can mess with, this is the text field. In the no. Did I answer your question? Okay. So what is your question? Now I'm answering your question when you say it again. These students are rough. And spreadsheet to make those fields These fields? Okay. By having a column, 
every column will get written as a field. The reason that gets written as a field, if you look at the JSON file, which is something that I wouldn't have thought that I would actually show you, but I'll show you anyway. Here's the first tiddler. Um, the title is project, so that writes in the title field. The text is that. The primary tag is blank, but it still creates a primary tag field. So simply by having a column, you use the column name to name the field, and then whatever values are in that cell. So here I've got um, a template filter, and everybody else is blank. Here I've got a reference link. All the tiddlers are blank on reference link except for my four reference tiddlers. Does that answer your question? I think it does, but I'm not sure that you've got it. So you create a template, whatever you put up in your column headers in row one, it's going to create fields in your tiddlers. If you didn't have this field called title, as James found out the hard way, if you don't have a field called title, it won't write any tiddlers because it doesn't know what to call it. Naming the, you mean the row one? Row one is very important. The key fields there are title, have to have title. If you want tags, it has to say tags. You can't say tag, it has to say tags. None of the other field names matter. I don't think. Yep. Okay. Text is a field. It's just a special field. Yeah. Tags is a field. They're special fields, too. Um, and I'm still working on understanding why they're special and how to fix them, how to mess with them. But um, essentially, that's how you would get it to work. Um, so on this project dimension template, all I'm doing is putting the name of the template so that when you, you can, A, know that it's being called, appropriately and then you if you when you want to edit it it's really easy to get back to it because templates are hard to find the tiddlers for templates are not necessarily e hard to, easy to find I I tag them all the um, project templates so that they are easy to find but if you don't tag them to something they're hard to find here's the other this is the tag that I forgot if you don't tag it to dollar sign colon slash tag slash view template with a capital V and a capital T, it will never be interpreted as a template. I believe that's true. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it to be true. These are all the templates in your wiki so far. Most of them you've never touched before. But if you want to change the way that title is displayed, you can edit the shadow tiddler called view template title and um, change it. Or not. <laughs> but you can mess with this, you can do whatever you want. Um, when you break it, you delete your version and the shadow version comes back to replace it. So you can always get it back. That's a very kind of cool feature of the shadows. Um, and this is my favorite one to mess around with. Nope, there it is. So the way that view templates work is it, the view template works by it gets everything in the list and renders them in that order. So if, for example, we wanted to put title on the bottom of our tiddler because we don't like it on top, I put title at the end of the list instead of in the beginning of the list, and um, now the titles are on the bottom of the tiddlers. That's kind of cool. Right, so you can, once you learn the templates for your own purposes, all of a sudden you can change everything. So, all right, I don't really like that. I mean, I kind of do. I like the fact that I can do it, but I am going to, you can revert to the original version in the plugin by deleting this tiddler. I'm going to delete this tiddler. It's a little scary. It's like, oh, I love your template. And now the project titles are back on top. Um, I'm, I have been messing around with the idea of, um, where's, what is the one that I want? I realize I can't talk and type at the same time. I need, I don't want view template title, I want view template. 
Um, I kind of like the idea of the tags. Um, this I can get rid of that fold and unfold fold stuff. There's tags. I kind of like tags on top of my titles. That's different. Um, and so that's why you might want to play with templates. There's, it's, it is a pretty powerful part of, um, I'm going to reverse, revert it. Um, because people will be confused. So um, let's look at the techniques being practiced template. Um, then we want to look at, uh, we were on hypertextual techniques, filtering, tagging, templating, and it tells you the template that it's using. Now, so what else, what else could we, would we want to do with a template other than display its title? So, um, in all of my templates being practiced, titlers, those are them. Templates, techniques being practiced, titlers. Um, let's look at them. I have a value of a hypertextual technique. I have a value of practice and I have a primary tag that I can type. So suppose in my, um, I'm just gonna grab the name of this field, hypertextual technique. And we'll go to the techniques being practiced template, edit it. And right now I'm just asking for the name of the template, but now I'm gonna ask for something else. Um, value of my field is and the name of the field that may work or it may not okay so that may call the value of the current titler the template titler or it may call the value and I can't remember which it does but that's the kind of thing that you play with um, we're going to save that let's look at one of the Techniques being practiced. So what it's so so here's the so what is happening here? Is that working? Okay, how would we test that? Sandra, are you with me here? How would we test? So what we did is we messed with the templating tech. This, this technique, and we added this line. We, we messed with this template, and we added this line to it. How would we test to see if that's working? We can go to another technique being practiced, say, filtering. Okay, we can go to another technique being practiced, say, transcluding. And um, that seems to work. So, you can not only write things, but you can treat the way that things are displayed. You can put pictures up there. You can do whatever it is that you want to display. You can put that there. So, for example, in Cassandra's portfolio, she might have a field in each of her tiddlers that have her pieces called with a caption. You know, this is what I did. And maybe it's done something she did for a class, or she might have a field called class, or a column in her spreadsheet called class that will then get imported into these tiddlers. And then she can just make a, um, a template, well, I want the class here, and the semester here, and the, um, I'm recording a video, but you can't see me, right? Um, but you know, you want the different parts, in the different, you want the different fields to be represented in your tiddly somewhat different. Okay, so what do we actually do in this exercise? Um, I'm a little late, but I'm gonna spend a few more minutes here. Um, so what do you actually do? Um, here, exercise overview. So what I want you to understand, and I realize that neither of you guys are, none of you here are doing projects, but that's okay. You want, you need to understand this anyway without doing the project, is you understand templates, how they are used in hypertext to manage the separation of data from display. And no, I'm not going to read you this whole thing. Um, that's what Jeremy and I are going to talk about in the conversation, this whole philosophical perspective of separating data from display. Um, you have to build some templates into the wiki. And I want you to document that. That's the key is document the opportunities for templating while engaged in different writing practices. So what do you do? Uh, review the background readings. Um, 
look at the templates, we just looked at one, and then you select two writing practices. Let's say that I decided to select writing to think. And then you develop a way templating could be used as a technique. And you capture your notes and your thinking in this tiddler. Okay. It comes with some content. Um, it's transcluding the guidelines. I'll just get rid of that. And then, um, so let's think about it. Like, how would I actually use templating while writing to think? Or how would I use, you don't have any idea, right? Seems like that would occupy your thinking, so you can think about which yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> how would you use template while writing to think? So what do you do when you sit down to write to think? Start listing words. You open a document. Right, I mean, you can't, you start listing, I mean, I, I, I'm being really obnoxious, right? So what do you do, like, take a step, like, seriously, what do you do? Like, what exactly do you do when you sit down at your computer, that's what happens, you paper and pencil, and you write to think, you said, what do you do? You have to have a, a surface on which to write. You can't just write on your computer, like, that's like, so you have to write in a piece of software. You open Google Docs, and you start typing. You open to the wiki, and you start typing. Either one. So, when you do, what do you, so now you've got your document open and you're starting to type and what do you, like, so what's the process? You just type stuff, do you? I would like start with like, for like thinking of a logo or something like design wise, I would like think of a word and then maybe like tag other ideas that came with that one word mm -hmm. or like tag other things like to one idea and then open it up, like make another one and add more ideas to that one. You just build tiddler after tiddler after tiddler, you mean? And like tagging them, yeah. Yeah, so I get how you tagging makes sense. Yeah. But how about template? So here's an example um, that TiddlyWiki has built in, um, which is templating, called journal. So how does this use templating? So it's tagged journal. There should be a journal template somewhere. We're not going to be able to find it. Um, there should be a journal template. It doesn't matter if we don't find it. Um, but the concept of, so when you click a new journal, it gives it a date and gives you a blank tip. So how else could you use, how is this like a template? So I might create a new template, um, new idea template. I'm going to tag it to that um, difficult to find tag called tags view template. I have trouble there. Uh, easiest thing to do is actually, if you, you know, so you can just clone a template. So I'll just clone this and we'll call it new ideas template. Um, so if it's a new idea, um, we'll just stick with our debugging. Okay. Um, So now we've got, we're ready for new ideas. What would we want to show up in our blank tiddler that would help us as we're writing our new ideas? You could ask, you know, if you've got some level of structure, you could say, well, does it belong to any of these categories? Is it a, so you could use it to categorize, which is what you're saying for tagging, but we could do that in templating as well. Um, let me show you the, and I think you've seen this in, um, well, you, yeah, you could. Um, you saw this in a, um, you've seen this in a couple of different places, this checkbox approach. I'll just put a break there. Um, So what, let's say that you say what kind of a uh, like good idea, and 
So here what we're going to do is make a very simple checkbox that will tag it as um, Okay, so we're looking for new ideas. Okay. So we tag this with new ideas. And what it's going to do is give you a, a um, that's not rendering as a, as a wiki link because I forgot to put the brackets around it. Okay, but it's going to give you a checkbox that if you tuck, tag it or click it, it'll say it's a good idea. Actually, it says it's a new idea, so let's, oh, there it is, good idea. Okay, I don't like the fact that it's a question mark, and so now I'll show you why it was really would have been good if I had, um, there's my new ideas template. So let's get rid of good idea, question mark, um, and save it. And so that's an example. And so what I want you to do for your assignment is say, here's my template, here's my concept, this is what I did, and build that in the week. Okay. Um, so let me stop the record there, take a break, because Cassandra's leaving and I just